right, differentiate e to the 5x with respect to x. So this is a bit of a callback to some of those earlier questions we were having a look at. Again, this is in the form e to the power of f of x. So my derivative of that will equal f dash x times e to the f of x. So in this case, the derivative of e to the 5x, my f dash in this case, because f of x is 5x, up the top there, because um, f of x is 5x, then f dash x is just 5. And then I get left with e to the power of f of x, which in this case is 5x. Simple question, so that's why it's just the one mark. And this one here is a teensy bit more complicated. Um, I've got here log base e of 2x squared. So again, coming back to our reference sheet here, y equals ln f of x, that's the same as log base e of f of x, so I'm going to use this result here. I'm going to say that this guy here, I'm going to call that f of x. So dy on dx will equal f dash x on f of x. That's what I got from the reference sheet. So if uh, f of x is 2x squared, if I differentiate that, I'm getting 4x. Divide that by 2x squared, and there's just a teeny bit of cancelling that happens. Uh, that 2 cancels, leaving 2 on the top. Um, this x will cancel with one of the x's on the bottom, and that gives me my result, which looks to me like 2 over x. Now, just like in the previous question that we had a look at, well, not the previous, but the previous previous question we saw with the logs, I can break this log function apart into two pieces as well. So let's just have a look at how to do this another way. If I say y equals log, natural log, of 2x squared, we saw before when I had something divided inside the log, it becomes log something take away log something. This time I don't have division, I've got multiplication. So that means I convert this into log of something plus log of something else. So what, what's a helpful way to break this apart? Well, I would probably say I'm gonna break it into log two plus log of x squared. You can see there's two and there's the x squared which combined to make the two x squared in the initial working. So now I've got a, a simpler statement for y. I'm now going to differentiate that dy on dx. Uh, log 2, this is just a number. So uh, it's a constant. When I differentiate it, I just get 0. So I'll, I'll just write 0. And then I'm going to repeat this same process that I did with the f dash on f before. In this case, f of x is, is x squared. So it's derivative f dash will be 2x divided by x squared, and so I get 2 over x just like I did before. So, happy times. Let's have a look at part c. What's the derivative of e to the 3x plus 4 on x cubed? So, there's a quotient here, uh, and we have to deal with it using the quotient rule, so I'm going to call this guy u and this guy v. So, if I write u equals e to the 3x plus 4, then what that tells me is that the derivative of u, or u dash, is going to be equal to 3e to the 3x, and that plus 4 differentiates and disappears. If v is equal to x cubed, then that tells me that its derivative, v dash, is equal to 3x squared. And these four pieces here, u, v, u dash and v dash, they're what I'm going to be what I use to assemble my quotient rule. Now, the quotient rule is on the reference sheet just like we looked at before. Um, here it is, whoops, y equals u over v, and you can see that uh, quoting of the quotient rule over there on the right hand side. I think that's actually quite a complicated, even though it's technically accurate, way to write the quotient rule. So, my preferred way of writing the quotient rule, dy on dx, is to use this u, u dash v dash notation. So if I just take the same quotient rule that you saw on the reference sheet, it converts to v u dash minus u v dash on v squared, which my teachers used to call a vuv. So very easy to remember. So now I just need to quote all of the bits and pieces, put together the jigsaw from what I got before. So let's have a go. V is x cubed, u dash is going to be 3e to the 3x. Take away u, which I think we said was e to the 3x plus 4, multiplied by v dash, which is 3x squared. All of that is divided, that's better, by v squared. Since v is x cubed, I'm going to write that as x cubed squared. 
Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. I need some more space, so I'm gonna sneak over here on the right hand side. I can do a teeny bit of simplification here. Um, for instance, I notice on the top of my um, fraction on my numerator, I've got an x cubed and I've got a, an x squared over here. So there's a common factor at least of x squared. So I'm gonna write that out the front. In fact, I'm gonna leave myself a teeny bit of space because that's not the only common factor that you can see on the top. There's also a three here and a three here, so I can take out 3x squared from both of the terms in the numerator. When I do that for the left hand function, I'm going to be left with, let's write a bracket here, um, I took out x squared, so x cubed divided by x squared leaves me with an x. Um, I've already factored out that 3, and then I get left with this e to the 3x that you can see here. So e to the 3x, there's the left hand term. And then I have a look at the next part, and if you have a look closely, I've actually factored out everything from that 3x squared. It's something I don't need to worry about anymore. So I just get left with the minus e to the 3x. Watch out for that minus sign because it then attaches, or I should say distributes, this is the distributive law, if you think back to year seven, to that plus four. So minus four is what we end up with. Then I'm dividing and x cubed all squared is going to be x to the power of three times two. So it's x to the power of six. Um, this means I can simplify a little bit further. So you can see that again, I can do some canceling here. Let's choose a color here. x squared there, and there's an x to the six on my denominator. So what that means is I can cancel out um, two x's, you know, x and then x gives me the x squared. So that gives me the three still on the top. Uh, nothing inside my brackets is a like term, so I'll just write it as it was before. 3x minus 4 on the denominator because I've divided through by x squared. That leaves me with x to the 4, and I'm finished. Okay, let's have a look at part D. Differentiate y equals 3 cos to the 4x. All right, so let's have a look at this as we go, you can see that that cos to the power of 4x, remember it's shorthand for cos x to the power of 4. So we're going to use the chain rule here. When I find the derivative, for starters, I'm just going to put that 3 to one side. When you have a constant coefficient like this, um, you can kind of just uh, ignore it briefly, uh, write it down, and then it just sort of doesn't really affect the rest of the derivative. Now I'm going to do uh, the cos x to the power of 4. Uh, if I deal with the inside derivative, the inside function is cos x. There it is right there. So my inside derivative will be minus or negative sine x, like so. And then I deal with the outside function. It's something to the power of 4. So I know that when you have something to the power of 4, you bring the index down and then you reduce the index by one. So there's my differentiation, and I'm just gonna now tidy it up a little bit. I can see that I've got, uh, in terms of constants, I've got a three, a negative one, and a four, so they combine into negative 12, and then I've got sine x, cos x all cubed, which I can write as cos cubed x. That's the derivative.